effortlessness. Sometimes the most effective method of dealing with danger is to simply vanish before it can touch us. Breakfalls. Learning to fall and roll is an important skill in ninjutsu training. backward breakfall. Extend your left leg, lower yourself to the ground on your right side. Begin a backward roll over the right shoulder and recover in a fighting position. This is a left side breakfall. Extend your left leg to your right, lower yourself on your right leg, roll to your left over your right shoulder and recover in a fighting position. In many ways, this breakfall is much like the backwards breakfall, except that your initial movement starts to the side. Basic front breakfall is done from a squatting position, palms down before you. Push off into a forward fall and land on your palms and forearm while counterbalancing with your left leg. Recover. is done from a standing position only after you have mastered the basic version. Always recover after a breakfall. Volume 1, we will show you the complete series of techniques in slow motion, then drill on each technique separately. Study this entire segment and drills a number of times before practicing with a partner. As we mentioned in Volume 1, 
An atmosphere that allows concentration is vital. There should be as little conversation as possible and no extraneous noise. Music should be held to a minimum. You should train with these tapes in the quiet of your room, as if alone with your instructor. This is your library. We do not burden you with unnecessary narration or music that would distract from your observations. Study these drills closely. Repeated viewing of each technique is sufficient in imprinting these movements on your nervous system. The more you watch this tape, the better your skills in ninjutsu will develop. for a review. Heel strike to the thigh. Arm and shoulder lock. Evasion and cap stomp. to the head. Elbow wrench. Trip lock. Another option available to us is to embody the spirit of the wind. Effortless evasiveness allows us to move right through the middle of danger without it even touching us. Can you imagine the frustration of trying to catch the wind? That's the feeling we leave with our assailant. Now 
shifting from the attacker's blow, parry and counter with a headbutt, leg trip follow-up. Finish with a stomp on the opponent's shin. Sensei Hayes parries the attack and effortlessly moves into the opponent for a leg trip and stomp to the shin of the fallen opponent. This is a look at the same technique from another angle. With this technique, the key is in having the blows just miss you, thus eliminating the need to block the blows. posture associated with the wind level is the Hirano Kamae. Light, circular, evasive actions are possible from this position. of the weighted chain or cord in wind evasion techniques follows the same principles of light, shifting, and evasive movements. Here, the opponent's arm is trapped in one fluid motion for the takedown. Let's look at that trapping technique close up. This technique relies upon the strength and flexibility of the chain to effectively seize the opponent by the neck for the takedown. Two techniques with weapons, such as the chain or cord, will incorporate kicks, throws, and holds whenever possible.
Study the movements to understand why an area is being kicked or seized. A thorough knowledge of leverage is the key in applying any weapons technique. The wind is the human heart, interaction with others, benevolence. It can also be evasiveness in physical action. See if you can capture the light touch of the wind that moves leaves about on an autumn day. moves through the lungs of us all, tying us together as we share this world. Sword Techniques grip for the Japanese sword is always right hand over left, allowing a little bit of space above the hand guard and space between the two hands. This permits total flexibility and free motion, so the sword can go into any position for which it's required in combat. Proper dynamics for effective cutting with the Japanese sword are a matter of coordinating the legs, the body, the arms, the blade all together for smooth transmission of cutting power along the edge. Again, what's necessary is all the pieces working together. What we find can happen inappropriately is just the arms and the blade move. This would be totally inappropriate for real combat with the sword. Again, what's necessary is all the body working together. Legs, body, arm, cutting edge of the blade. This allows for a smooth, even transmission of power right along the cutting edge. Effective ninjutsu sword techniques can only be developed if you understand the principles of the elements. Like the water or wind, your sword can be allowed to flow into the openings created by your opponent so that you cut him naturally and effectively. Without clashing swords head-on, the ninja might use the wind evasion principle to engage and cut an unguarded area.
momentarily concealing the weapon permits the ninja to fully realize his opponent's path of attack and move in close to apply this technique with a natural flow. Again, rather than clashing blades one against the other, as it might appear was the intent, the ninja permits his opponent to slice his own wrist on his blade. Going directly to the heart of the matter is the goal here. Facing the sun gives the opponent an advantage and must be dealt with decisively. From a low attitude, the ninja is perfectly poised to intercept the downward stroke of his opponent's blade and follow through with thrusting strokes to the neck. Again, from a low attitude, the ninja is able to redirect his opponent's blade and effectively apply these countercuts. and concealment are the keys to the success of this sword technique. Attacking first and just out of range, the ninja draws his opponent's counter and has prepared a counter to the counter in response.
American basic techniques. This is the basic position used in handling the shuriken for handheld techniques of stabbing, ripping, and cutting. This flipping maneuver prepares the shuriken for throwing. Effectively concealed, the shuriken is first used to hit the punching arm and follow up with a strike to the neck. After blocking the opponent's punching arm, the shuriken is pulled across the opponent's neck. the shuriken is hooked behind the opponent's head and helps to execute this shoulder thrust and striking technique. Stabbing and thrusting movements are combined in this technique. Soft spots and pressure points are the desired targets, but the shuriken can be used effectively wherever it is applied. Using the arm as a lever, the ninja forces his opponent's arm down onto the weapon.
Applying Earth stability principles increases the effectiveness of the ninja's movements. Shuriken throwing. Throwing the shuriken with skill and precision is an art that takes years of practice in understanding its handling, weight, trajectory, and delivery. Proper body dynamics involve shifting forwards and backwards during a throw. is an extension of your forward energies as you shift back and forth. Evading and stopping the throwing star is done with a downward slapping motion. Lessons 124 through 151. Fire. From the fire, we learn the power of directed intentions. We can pierce through to attain that which we need. Fire piercing techniques. these techniques a few times along with the drills to follow. After you are mentally familiar with the sequence, then try them with a partner. Observe these drills closely. After repeated viewing, these movements will become instinctive. Review. Thrusting punch to the chest. Forearm 
to the face. Stop kick to the groin. Shin stop kick and forearm to the throat. Shin stop kick, ridge hand. By letting go of all tension and stiffness, we are freed to move with timely directness. Motion is straightforward and piercing without urgency, and yet going directly to the heart of what it is we need. In this first technique, Hay slips the oncoming blow and attacks the opponent's striking arm before executing a knee strike and takedown. Same technique as seen from another angle. Notice how, instead of sidestepping, the ninja might move directly into his opponent for the counter technique. This is the essence of the fire principle. Using the knife in defense against another knife, the ninja immediately sees to disarming his opponent after evading the weapon. As the knife comes up by the opponent's neck, it could easily be used in a cutting technique at this angle.
fighting posture associated with the fire element is Jumonji no Kamae, aggressive, forward moving action. This technique also makes use of the water principle by allowing the ninja's blade to flow into the opening presented by his opponent's offensive. With this knife defense tactic, you are slicing the attacker's arm while simultaneously applying an arm throw counter. He, the fire, represents the metabolism of the body the exuberance and aggressiveness of the personality. As you paint the Japanese kanji for the fire, see if you can get a little bit of that spirit of the flame as it leaps from the logs. Historically, the fire character was made up of a man carrying two torches symbol of the fire in us all. Firearm disarming techniques. A ninja's skill in defense against contemporary weapons must also be developed. Notice which hand holds the gun. You will pivot to the outside of the weapon.
moving first, you will not get shot. Your opponent's lag in reaction time gives you the necessary second you need. And by turning the weapon back on the attacker, you prevent yourself from getting shot as you disarm the opponent. Even at this close range, you have the option of a first move, which will prevent your being shot. The key is to move to the outside of the weapon, past the barrel of the gun. At worst, a slow move on your part might result in a grazing wound instead of a full shot. Again, Hayes turns the weapon back on the opponent. security or law enforcement agent might face the possibility of an attempt to wrestle his weapon from him. There are a few counter moves to this attempt.
urban defense tactics. Imagine, you're by yourself, far from home, maybe even it's late at night, and you end up with a flat tire. How vulnerable. The perfect time to become the victim of someone who chooses to attack you. But look around, right there in the trunk of your car. So many tools to be used for your own self-protection. A jack handle, roadway flares, aerosol cans of quick-starting fluid or oil. In some states, tire chains. Learn to observe. Learn to be aware of all those tools right there at your own hand, ready to be used for your protection. Lessons 152 through 158. Use of natural elements. For the warrior, there are many lessons to be learned from the elements of nature. Observe them well, for they have much to teach.
shaggy oak beneath which you played as a child on summer afternoons has yielded you this fighting staff. Take and apply it against your attackers with the same resolute stance as the oak rooted among the rocks. Imitating the mighty limbs of its source, the oak staff hums as it flails the winds and resounds as the skulls of the foolish strike its hardness and futility. Is it truly violent if brutal oppressors happen to stand where the tip of the oak staff chooses to sail? <laughs> 